cleaning resuscitation equipment. During use, resuscitation equipment becomes contaminated with the body fluids of mother and baby. If you simply wash your equipment with soapy water and set it to dry, the equipment may appear clean. Harmful germs, too small to see however, may still remain. These germs can pass into a baby's airway, leading to infection. This video will show the key steps of cleaning resuscitation equipment to make it safe for the next baby. The first step is preparation. Organize the room into a separate clean area and a dirty area. Wear protective clothing to protect yourself from harmful germs on the equipment and any splashes of chemical. You need boots, an apron, gloves, mask, eye protection, and a cap. You can wear clean exam gloves or utility gloves at this step. Prepare a solution of 0.5% chlorine and soapy water fresh each time you need to clean the equipment. Next, wipe off the equipment right after use. This step makes cleaning easier and safer by removing secretions before they harden on the equipment and removing harmful germs such as hepatitis or HIV. Dip a piece of gauze in your solution of chlorine and wipe all the surfaces on the outside of the equipment. Re-soak the gauze when you start on a different piece. Now, clean the equipment. Open the suction devices. Then, take the ventilation bag apart completely. To help you remember how, take it apart in the same order each time. Numbering the parts is another helpful way to remember how to take the bag apart and how to put it back together. Now, scrub all surfaces of each part inside and out in soapy water. Use a clean cloth and a soft brush. A toothpick can be used to clear the tip of the suction device. After washing, drop each piece in a bucket of clean rinse water. Immerse the parts and move them around in the water to remove the soap. Then set them on a rack to dry. If you see a light chalky material on the equipment, it's likely to be a buildup of minerals and should be removed. Make a solution of equal parts water and white household vinegar. Soak the submerged parts in the solution for 10 minutes. 
Then rinse them in a bucket of clean water until they no longer smell of vinegar. Now the equipment is ready for disinfection. There are four methods. The first method is soaking the parts in a chemical solution such as 0.5% chlorine. Be sure to dilute it properly and make it fresh that day. Label it with the date and time. Also, prepare three buckets of boiled and cooled water for rinsing. First, dry each piece inside and out to avoid diluting the chemical. Then, immerse them in the container of chlorine. Be sure all parts are completely submerged and none are floating. Cover the container. Now, start your timer. Soak the pieces for 20 minutes in the chlorine. Now, Use disinfected forceps with smooth ends to take each piece from the chlorine and put it in the first of three buckets of boiled and cooled water. Transfer each piece from one bucket to the next to thoroughly rinse off any remaining chemical. Then remove each piece from the third bucket Shake off the water and place them on a tray that has been disinfected. Put on sterile gloves and dry each piece inside and out with sterile gauze. The second method is boiling. Put all the parts in an empty pot. Add clean water. Be sure all the pieces are submerged and full of water so they don't float. Next, close the lid. Bring the water to a rolling boil. Then start your timer. Boil for 20 minutes. Then turn off the heat and remove the pieces. Put them on a tray that has been disinfected. Put on sterile gloves and dry each piece inside and out with sterile gauze. The third method is steaming using a multi-layer steamer pot. First, Fill the bottom pot with a liter of clean water. Then stack the steamer pans with the parts and put the lid on top. Bring the water to a boil. When the steam starts to come out between the pans and the lid, start your timer. Steam the items for 20 minutes. Remove the steamer pans one by one, shaking off the excess water, and place them on an empty pan on the counter. Place the lid on top. Let the equipment air dry in the steamer pans. The fourth method is steam sterilizing the equipment in an autoclave. Place the parts on a tray with a little space between each item to allow free circulation of the steam. Then 
set the tray in the autoclave. Set the temperature and time needed to sterilize the equipment depending on the type of autoclave you have. Keep a record using a sterilization log. Once the complete sterilization cycle is done, let the equipment cool before removing it from the autoclave. Now you've disinfected the equipment. Wearing sterile gloves, inspect each piece for damage and then count the pieces for each ventilation bag. Repeat the cleaning process if they are not clean and replace any damaged or missing parts. Next, put the bag back together. Here's one way. Remember the order you took them apart. Then line up the pieces in the opposite order. Start with the last piece. Now test that the equipment is working well. First, squeeze the bag and watch for the valve to open and close. Next, make a seal with your palm and squeeze the bag. You should feel pressure against your hand. See the bag reinflate and hear air escaping from the pop-off valve. Then, test the suction device. Squeeze it, block the tip, and release. It should not expand until the tip is free. To store the equipment, either wrap it in sterile linen, or place it in a plastic or metal container that has been disinfected. The lid should fit tightly. Remember, to prevent the spread of dangerous germs, thoroughly clean your resuscitation equipment. Follow the steps. Wipe the equipment, take it apart, clean, then disinfect it, dry, then put it back together, test, and store it. Make sure your equipment is safe for the next baby.